think we can do a special offer for you, sir? Hero, your will energy is low. Watch that. What's going on, YouTube? My name's Alex. This is SG's Gaming. Last week, I took a look at Fable 2. So this week, we'll be talking about Fable Anniversary. Fable 1 was originally released on the Xbox with a North American release date of September 4th, 14th, excuse me, 2004. The expansion, called Lost Chapters, was released the following year. On February 4th, 2014, developer Lionhead Studios dropped Fable Anniversary on the Xbox 360. The big selling point of Anniversary was the enhanced audio and updated graphics. Fable Anniversary story starts off with your small boy in a little town called Oakvale. You need to get three gold pieces so that you can buy a box of chocolates and give it to your sister for her birthday. After you give the box of chocolates to your sister, a group of bandits attacks your village, slaughtering everyone in the village and leaving you for dead. Thankfully, the guild leader, called Maze, comes to your rescue and takes you away to the Heroes Guild. And thus, you set off on your journey to become a hero. Will you become a benevolent ruler and help the people of Albion? Or will you become an evil dictator? Throughout multiple aspects of the story, you can choose whether you wish to be very good or completely evil. It was one of the selling points when this game first came out. And depending on what you choose to do, it alters the story. I won't get any spoilers here, but it was rather unique at the time for the way that it does this. Now next, I'd like to touch on Fable's controls, which are a bit of a mixed bag. On the one hand, they're very easy to pick up, but oftentimes when you go to attack an enemy, you'll find yourself completely missing, or you'll end up hitting something else or a different enemy entirely. This is especially true when you try to use the bow. One of the highlights of the controls is just the sheer amount of spells that you can buy and also use. By the end of the game, you'll feel like just an unstoppable monster who just mauls everything in your path. It's really cool the amount of spells you can use in this game. I believe that the area where Fable shines the brightest is in its overall music and sound effects. Each track was expertly crafted and is very memorable, whether it's the opening theme or just the main theme in the forest or the various areas that you get to play in in Albion. Likewise, all the sound effects in this game are crisp and sharp. Whenever you swing with your sword, clash swords with an enemy, or cast a spell. The biggest area where Fable lacks is just its overall size. By RPG standards, Fable is actually pretty small. Albion and the world are just... There's not a whole lot of really exploring that you can do. I mean, the entire story can be completed in... Uh, a little under 15 hours if you really just rush through the story. It's not to say the story is bad, but it's just the game overall is small by today's RPG standards. So finally, to answer the question, is Fable Anniversary worth picking up and playing today? Absolutely. It's a lovely, charming little RPG, and that one I personally have a ton of nostalgia for and still enjoy popping in and playing today. So, whether you have this on the original Xbox, titled Fable, or Fable Lost Chapters, or you want to pick up Fable Anniversary, which is only for the Xbox 360, but is backwards compatible on Xbox One. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time.